Hello, hello everyone. It is Wednesday at 1 o'clock, so that means it is time for Live Art Mini. I am Stephen Smith, and here I am, coming to you live from Inside Out Studio. So welcome, thank you for joining us again. This is our fourth installment of Live Art Mini, and today we're going to be going over some splatter painting, and I'll introduce you to the artist Jackson Pollock, if you've not yet heard of him. But like I said, fourth installment, you can check out our previous installments with myself and Amanda Joy on our YouTube channel as well. So check that out if you have not tuned in for the other ones. So uh, my friendly assistant, Kim Neal Davis, is manning the front. She's going to be posting the link to that as well. And I'm not sure about my audio. She's also going to come running back and tell me to quiet down or turn it up too if you're having trouble hearing me. So welcome. Today, first, I'm going to start off by thanking those of you that participated last week. We do have some people that have shown what they've been up to. I'm going to show this piece here by Dwayne Sparks. He's one of our artists here at Inside Out Studio. I hope you have some of our artists tuning in today and participating as well. But his mom, Jean, sent in this picture of Dwayne, what he created with his magazine collage last week. I love that snowman right there. We could all use a little bit of Christmas spirit right now. I'm also going to switch over to, oh, back to me. That's not right. Here we go. Technical difficulties, everyone. This was submitted by our good friend, Michelle Barnes Davis, and her son, Elliot, created this collage. I love this. This looks like an ad for like an allergy medication to me. You've got this awesome lady down there in the middle of all the flowers and the dog jumping out the window. So thank you, Elliot, for creating that. I love it. And I want to give a shout out, too, to Michelle. If you don't know Michelle Barnes Davis, she oversees Miami Valley Ballet Theater, which is right underneath where we are in downtown Hamilton. We're actually in the same building. And she does classes for our adults with disabilities that attend Inside Out Studios, as well as youth with disabilities as well. And she does that in her free time on her own. So she is awesome. Just want to say that. If you know her, you're better off for it. But thank you for joining us today for Inside Out. We are going to get to some art today. So we're going to do some painting. So hopefully you prepared some materials. If not, come back and watch this and then do it at home at your leisure. But we ask you to gather up some latex paint. So house paint, anything you might have sitting around the house, things that you haven't used, some leftover paint from like an interior project you had. But it's got to be latex paint, house paint specific. Um, some sticks, stir sticks, we're going to be using that. If you have some brushes, that's fine. But we're going to be doing some non-traditional techniques, having some fun, and getting a little bit messy. You need a surface to work on, whether that's an old canvas. Maybe you've got a picture on the wall you're tired of looking at, you just want to paint right over top of. Or if you've got some plywood floating around the house. And always we're going to have to do some cleaning, so you're going to need a water bucket. And then a tarp, something to put on the ground something to keep the mess from getting out of hand. So I'm going to move back down here to the floor and then get started on our splatter painting for the day. All right, I prepared a canvas ahead of time. So you could either work on something blank, just a white canvas. Like I said, plywood works too. Art comes in all shapes and sizes. So what do you have laying around the basement or laying around the house? sitting in the dumpster, leaning up against the trash can, paint on it. So I did prepare a canvas ahead of time. Got this nice teal base going on. So I got my house paints. We've got our bucket of water and a second bucket of water too. So we're going to do some splashing effects later on. Um, couldn't find a stir stick. So I got this nice ruler. It was from Liberty Mutual. Apparently they're in the ruler game as well. Um, it's not sponsored by Liberty Mutual, but hey, if you guys know anyone that works there and they want to throw some money our way, we will take it. So let's first of all make sure that your house paint is in good condition. So let's crack open a bucket here. Easier said than done. I'm not good at cleaning the edges around the buckets of paint, so they're usually pretty well sealed shut. And just Try this baby off. How about that? I'm hoping this is good. Not looking great so far. Give it a good stir. This stir brought to you by Liberty Mutual. And then it's good to go. So it's nice, thin consistency. It's 
going to make good dripping. So that's why we're using latex house paint. One of the properties that we're looking for is, big word, viscosity. So we've got some nice viscosity to this paint. It's nice and fluid. It drips really well. You could fling it, get some thicker areas going on. So it kind of comes off like honey or a thick maple syrup. You could drizzle it, get some thinner lines, kind of like that. And right now I'm just playing. I don't really have any thoughts in mind what I want to do. I'm just showing you some examples of what that paint could do for you. Let's see. Rinse that off real quick. I did peel open a lid earlier and the paint was not in good condition. Pretty thick. It's like when you get a blizzard from uh, Dairy Queen, they flip it upside down, nothing's coming out. So, what would you do this with this? You could probably, uh, what I heard, the best way to dispose of old house paint, if you want to get rid of it doing some spring cleaning, is you can actually mix cat litter into it till it absorbs all the moisture from the paint and turns into a solid. Then it's safe to throw away. What I've heard is that you don't want to put house paint into the trash can because the toxic can seep into the ground itself. So let's crack open some more paint here. And then we'll do some mixing as well. So if you have any primer at home or a light paint, you can start to mix some colors that go well together. So two groups of colors that you can probably get from house paints that you might have around that are fairly common would be what we call neutral colors, which are kind of like earth tones, they're a little bit duller. And then you could also get some pastels out of there too. So if you have any white, like I said, paint or primer, you can mix it into the other colors to make a pastel color grouping. So this has got a good mix going. So I'm not sure how well you can see from that distance, but this has nice smooth consistency. And just looking at that, I'm gonna go with a line pattern. So if you're not sure where to start with your dripping, I'd say think of a nice line quality that you wanna do. It could be swirling circles, it could be curves, it could be going for zigzags. I'm gonna go for stripes. I'm just gonna lay down some blue stripes to go with the black stripes previously. And then we're gonna start talking about mixing some colors together. So one thing that you can do is get some cups Maybe you've got some old Solo cups in the pantry, some Dixie cups that you can mix some different colors into. I'm just going to zone out watching these colors flow real quick. And then I'm going to start mixing some colors as well. So let's go for a light blue. Another curly grouping that you could do is called monochromatic, which is basically taking one color, mixing various shades and tints of it by adding white or black to it. So keeping that simple, making one color with different shades also works well. i get my white ready to make a nice tint of blue. And this is a fairly messy process. Usually right about now I'd spill something and make a mess. Try not to jinx myself. But wear some old clothes, get outside, go down a drop cloth. I think we've got some better weather today. So let's say you want to mix a tint of blue. Just get in there, give it a swirl. Don't overmix it though. What's nice about this is you get a nice swirl effect. Get up nice close for the camera. Can you see that there? Get a nice swirling effect with the colors and you can start dripping it just like that. You overmix it, it mixes all the white and the blue together. And this is going to add some more texture in there. So I'm going to keep going with this line design. Maybe each color I add can have something different going on. I'm going to keep the vertical line movement happening, but maybe with this light blue, I'm going to give it a little bit of swirl as I start to do it. And if you take it outside, maybe you can take your frustrations out, do a little cathartic dripping experience, and just rear on that, give it a splash. Alright, what else can I add? I've got some 
some yellow up in here. And what's cool about this is you're letting the materials kind of flow on there in a non-traditional way. You're getting rid of what we call the artist's hand. So if you're doing a, a regular painting, you're brushing the paint on there. So it's the artist deliberately making strokes. What was really popular about splatter painting, and now poured painting, you might have seen that in the stores too, is that it kind of takes away that artist's hand and intention and lets the colors mingle together themselves on the canvas. Because what's going to happen is you get more and more paint piled up on top of each other. They're going to flow together and interact in different ways, sometimes unexpected ways. Add some more here. And at this point, I'm going to take a pause from what I'm doing and introduce you to the artist Jackson Pollock. So let me just pull up his image here. There is Mr. Jackson Pollock giving an example of his action painting. So he was considered an abstract expressionist, part of the larger modern art movement of the 20th century. So what is unique about the modern art movement is basically an exploration of materials. So after the invention of the camera, there is really no reason for artists to paint realistic scenes anymore. I know there's skill and talent with that, but there are some artists that just want to explore the materials for themselves. So what he kind of coined was splatter painting. You can see he's working pretty large scale there. Here is a picture of one of his works in the museum. And there's a, a young lady looking up the painting. So that gives you an idea of how large he was working. Really, really big paintings. Jump to one called Convergence. This is one that he did as well. So you can see from that original shot I showed you, he was working in upstate New York. He had a barn behind his property that he would work in and just pretty much roll out canvas onto the floor and then drip paintings, throw paintings, and then sometimes some of his paintings had footprints, handprints, cigarette butts built into it just from the nature of how he worked. And here he was featured in Time Magazine. So he was considered the first famous American artist before the time of Warhol there. Uh, prior to that, I don't think America's art game was that strong. It came over from Paris. So let me fade back in here. I'm gonna take you back to the floor. We're gonna throw a few other things on top of our canvas. So I've got the water buckets over here. What I'm gonna do is just kind of sprinkle some water on there, the different thicknesses of the paint is going to make different things happen. So now that I've included some water onto the surface, it's going to react differently to the paint that's already there because it's thicker. And then also any thick latex paint I put on the top is going to react to the water in different ways too. So basically you're just playing, you're experimenting, you're coming up with ways to make the paint react on the surface that you would expect. I do not want pink. I made some pink yesterday. Don't feel like using that today. Let's make some new color. I'm going to take some of this cream. Kind of quiet here in the studio. I was rocking out some Fleetwood Mac earlier today. I feel like music is required when you're making art. Feel free to comment at home. What do you like to listen to when you're making art? What do you like to rock out to or chill out to? I'm not going to mix it all the way together. I'm going to leave it so those lines of blue, lines of cream interacting with each other. And then I'm going to go back and add some straight white on top of this as well. If you happen to have some brushes at home, you can use the back end of the brush. I'm going to run and grab a couple of those right now. So what you don't want to do is you don't want to brush it with the bristles. But if you get different sizes of sticks or tools that you can use to drip with, you're going to get different line thicknesses. So you do have a little bit of control. There's different ways to vary 
the mark making that you're doing on there. We'll just go in with some white. So it's kind of a back and forth process. Sometimes you might hear artists say that the painting speaks to you, your artwork speaks to you. What it's telling me right now is I put too much light paint on there. So I'm going to go back after this. I'm going to put some black onto it as well. I feel like I want to make some distinct areas, maybe some focal points on the surface. So I'm going to focus on one spot. And just give some more attention to that. Maybe I'll have another area I'll focus on, give that some attention. Just a few swirls to make it pop out in the grand scheme of things. Maybe right on the edge here. Then once you get a number of layers on there and a thicker surface of paint, then you can really start to play with it. So it's going to get crazy. I'm going to pick it up, start to angle it, and you're going to see that that paint starts to move. Got some drips happening there, but I'm just going to turn it to an extreme angle and just let that paint drip for a few seconds. Turn it back this way, let it drip that way for a while, and that paint really starts to interact with the surface. You can see the areas where I got just plain water, they're starting to pool up, and the paint's really staying separated there because of the thinner liquid. So I'm going to wrap this baby up. I'm going to put some black on there, because like I said, I got too much light color. I need some bold contrast to come and just set that surface off. I got a lot of lines, so I'm going to just do some streaks, vertical streaks. Have fun splashing. Get some nice organic lines happening. An effect that would be almost impossible to create actually painting on the surface there. So that's some a few examples that you want to remember to use latex paint just because the viscosity of the paint makes it flow really easily. If you want to thin down your paint, don't use too much water, I would say, because that actually gets rid of some of the flow. It makes it very watery, but you can use just different thicknesses, different types of paint in terms of the water consistency so they interact in different ways. And once you build up the surface with a few layers, at that point, you can start to angle it back and forth. Let that paint move around on the surface and create some other effects as well. I'm gonna jump back up here, show you an example of one that I made yesterday. So this one looks like bubble gum. So lots of pinks involved with this one, some light blue. And if you really get into the surface there, you can see as it dried overnight, the different areas where watery paint was, you can have some cracking happening. So really different cool effects that are created just by splattering that paint together. So I hope you enjoy Live Art Mini for the day. So get out there, get splattering, get some of that old house paint, do a little bit of spring cleaning as well. So go ahead and post some pics here if you did create this at home. We'd love to see what your creations are, things that you've made. If you got paint all over yourself, go ahead and post that selfie as well. We'd love to see that. So post it in the comment section. And then we're also going to post where our online store is because you can still get on Inside Out Studio and purchase artwork made by the artist here through our online store. Proceeds will still go back to the artist for any online sales as well. Like I said, check out that YouTube page. You can see the previous live art minis. And then for next week, we're going to be making some cardboard masks. I want to introduce you to a local Hamilton artist that does some amazing animal faces out of the cardboard. And also some of the um, inspiration artists that she sent to me, some of their work as well. So gather up your cardboard, get some glue, get a pair of scissors or an X-Acto knife, and we're going to be playing with that next week. So until next Wednesday at 1 o'clock, this is Steven Smith signing off at Inside Out Studio for Live Art Mini. Have a great week, everybody.